Hey, uh, I'm just gonna do a super quick kind of round off to uh, this little project that I've been doing over the past few months, which is this guy. Um, it's a DJI, oh, upside down, DJI F450 main wheel. Um, yeah, so I've built it mainly just for uh, aerial photography. I've got the Tarot GoPro gimbal hooked up um, and I'm running this Futaba T8J controller which is yeah it's been really good for the the price um, so I'll go through quickly just to show you the setup that I'm using and um, roughly the the prices of everything and I'll put links below below um, to where I bought everything from in case you're interested um, yeah so uh, so at the back, you can see I've got the uh, Futaba, whatever it is, R200 8SB, blah, the receiver that comes with the transmitter. Um, I've mounted that guy at the back in between these two slots here. And I've got each aerial coming up just through some shrink tube and a zip tie going under these other zip ties that hold the ESCs on so they're kind of spread and out the way and they're not going to get hit by the, the blades because there's a fair bit of distance so keeps them tucked away nice and neat um, and then I've got my uh, USB module sitting at the back here so I get my indications obviously red being Facing forward, um, when I take off, I can see all my notifications, so I've put that at the back there. Um, now, I'm running this setup through SBUS, which is really wicked, because in case you can't see under there, I have a grand total of two cables going in to control everything, which is just wicked. Um, yeah, S Plus has been awesome. It's basically one plug, does everything. It's a digital signal, and yeah, it's kick ass. Um, so I've got my GPS module here. It's quite small, it's a bit misleading when you see uh, other videos of them. So that gives you a size of how big they actually are. They're, they're quite small. Um, uh, what else? So I'm using these. Uh, tarot landing legs that I, I got off eBay and they didn't come glued in so I've used some Selly's liquid nails <laughs> just to, to glue them in and I haven't cleaned them up very nicely so I've got to go back over and just clear all the edge of that goop off um, cleaned up a bit the other thing was that these legs were a little bit wobbly so I put some tape in the join there and that just takes the slack off them and makes them nice and nice and tight um, now one thing I couldn't find on on YouTube not many people seem to go over this so I'm gonna go over it uh, for you guys and that's how I actually mounted my legs and how I mounted the camera gimbal to the F450 without doing any kind of crazy modifications or any of that kind of bizzo so I'll turn it upside down. So what I've done is I went to my local hobby store and got some 10 mil carbon fiber tubing. I've cut that up to the length of the frame. You can kind of see there, it's approximately the length of the frame. Um, and then I've gone to my local hardware store, which was Bunnings here in Australia. Uh, and I got these little uh, little uh, rubber grommets they're like wiring grommets for you that would go through the wall typically but I found these ones that just happen to have the exact right size of zip ties so in case you can you can see that so that was perfect that worked out really well so I'm running those zip ties through the frame edges here you can see 
and it's really tight like it's not it's not going anywhere so I've got two at the back um, and I've got two at the front like so um, and I've also got underneath as well I got some of these little furry velcro straps um, I forget what brand they are but they're quite common if you go to your hobby store they should have them dual sky these ones are and I've got that um, just giving some pressure to the, the underside um, just to help keep it you know fail safe kind of thing in case one of the zip ties breaks or it will just keep some tension on there so um, I've got that under there and then yeah the tarot just plugs straight into the tube and away you go um, I've also put some zip ties around the the little vibration mounts just in case it decides to to come loose but it's it's very strong I, I don't see anything uh, coming off anytime soon and yeah there's tons of little fail safes everywhere so, so that's how I've actually mounted the the camera gimbal um, now in terms of the legs um, I see a lot of people trying to mount them through the bottom but I haven't opted to do that I thought a smarter way of going about it would be to mount them through the top so if I can show you so you can see my mount is actually just in the center there um, so that way it keeps the NASA um, flat which is good and I don't have to off center it it's directly like directly in the middle where it should be um, so all I had to do was I drilled two tiny little holes in the top of the board um, and just bolted it straight through um, there's plenty of clearance room for the for the NASA in there um, so I thought that was a much better way um, of going about it rather than having them hang off the back um, or hang off the bottom sorry and there's also there's there's loads of clearance room for the the gimbal so so that's a win um, another little trick that I've done uh, which is with my controller and you can probably see that uh, I've got these little colored rubber ends um, a controller doesn't come with them um, but the edge of the uh, the edges of the switches they're not very comfortable um, not that you're hanging on to them the whole time you fly or anything but um, I've seen a few of the higher end controllers they come with these little rubber ends and I was like thought about it and, and realized I've seen them before and I know where I saw them and that is on here they are the tips of the coat hangers and if you've got colored coat hangers you can color code your switches so I've got blacks blue and green so the green for me is my return to home um, and then this side here is my course lock and home lock and then my other blue one is the attitude mode and manual mode so that's a just a useful tip um, in case you're wondering you know where I actually got these I got them from the cupboard it's all right the wife doesn't know uh, so the next thing was I'd bought uh, one of these batteries for the gimbal just from my local hobby store um, 800 milliamp three cell lipo it's pretty fat though um, and it, it's it's not heavy or anything but the the weight that my quad was before was actually uh, close uh, or just over 1600 grams which is the maximum payload weight so I was using this lipo for the gimbal um, and I was using this LiPo for the main power. Now this is actually a, the LiPo battery I use for my uh, HPI WR8 Ken Block edition. So this battery is really powerful, but it's heavy and it's fat. So 
just got Hobby King Hall, and that had this guy in there. And this one is about a hundred grams lighter, but it's still four thousand milliamp. Um, so, and I also got one of these guys for the gimbal. So this is five hundred milliamp, not eight hundred, but that's still plenty to to power the gimbal. And this this battery is less than half the weight of the other 800 milliamp battery so you can see that one's very fat um, and this one's just tiny crazy thin um, and it was about six dollars fifty or something ridiculously cheap this one was about twenty dollars but I'll probably use this one uh, when I pull the gimbal off the quad and use it for, for handheld filming you know if I was actually filming for more than say 10 minutes at a time um, but for the flight time on this 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 battery is fine um, this is still going to last the whole day um, if not longer so so that's good um, uh, just quickly to show you where I'm mounting these little batteries for the the gimbal um, underneath here I'm not sure if I can do this with one hand um, under here, I got some furry Velcro stuff. Um, uh, focus. Yeah, that little black strip under there. So I can plug this battery just like so. There you go. Um, I have been using these uh, little Velcro straps, the same as I showed you under there just to keep this wrapped on around the receiver so it doesn't come off but I mean yeah it's not coming off anywhere and then yeah the plug goes from here to there Blam. so I got this Turnigy uh, transmitter carry bag now this thing was 10 bucks uh, and it's awesome like $10 yeah, to save your controller. You can't really beat that. It just feels good quality, like, you know, you wouldn't pick it for, for 10 bucks. So, highly recommend one of these guys as well. Just, you know, keep your controller nice and, and new and don't, don't break it in the car, lugging this thing around, so. And just real quickly, um, before we finish this up, I'll show you the weight of the quad. So I've got my trusty kitchen scales here. Turn on. Cool. Now because this obviously won't fit, I'm going to chuck a book on there. So I've got my trusty Evangelion book. Now we'll counter that weight out. Lovely. So we'll chuck him on there. So the total weight of the quad without batteries and GoPro is that 1098 grams 1099 grams um, so if we add the main battery get off the floor so it's 1395 and then with the gimbal battery as well 1439 and now with the GoPro as well so 15, 15, so it's not a bad weight, not too bad. Considering that when we take these two batteries away and just add that battery and that battery, whoops, which is what I was using, 1601, so one gram over the maximum payload weight. Even if I was to swap just the gimbal battery out, it'd be under. But the weight reduction of these two new batteries, including the GoPro, is actually the weight of another GoPro. So the weight of the batteries is quite, quite important. So that's where these are quite good. They're super light. So yeah, thanks for watching.